All right, let's get this. We're on part five, almost done. I'm just going to do a little bit of the uh, outside of the clock here, or maybe inside of the numbers with a little bit of a thicker, but not as thick. Burr is a used for for the owl. Uh, I just want to make these a little bit smoother, and you can make it a little bit smoother with a thicker burr. So again, I turn off my mic because it gets pretty loud, um, but. I don't know if you can see this, but it's very wobbly, this piece, so I don't know if it's a little bit bent. Uh, and that makes it very difficult to make a straight line, so I'm going to change this out. I'm not sure why. I think it's a little bit bent, so I'm going to switch this out. Yeah. All right, I think that's a little bit better. It seems to be seems to be much less wobbly it's not nearly as thick of a burr as I'd like to have it so I might have to do a couple of lines at the same time but it's definitely a lot better so I'm just gonna work with that for now and see if I can't get some decent straight lines along that clock make it a little bit thicker I'm just worried that that thin line that you can see in the top of the clock is gonna be a little bit uh, it's not gonna be enough once I remove that acrylic paint so I'm gonna get to that and then uh, we'll remove the paint and see what we got, see if I can do some more shading.
actually not liking the thickness on that, so let's see what we got here. I might use around I can use this round actually. See if this is going to be any better. definitely much better. I like the thickness on that. It's not going very straight, but the thickness is definitely a lot better. definitely much better I like that to get this edging done I might do some more in the uh, the numbers here but I'll be a bit out it's it's a little light around here is a little light too I don't mind the uneven unevenness of the lettering just because it adds a little bit you know a little bit of uh, inconsistency and I find in art inconsistency is is actually nice because it adds a little bit of character to, to the stuff you're working on so if you if you're doing anything that you, you know you're concerned about that's not looking you know perfect um, you got to get out of your own way because uh, as an artist you'll never be happy with what you have you'll you'll stare at it for for days and still not be happy with it so as soon as you get over the fact that you know it's never gonna be perfect to you you're gonna make a lot more art you're gonna enjoy it
like that's looking pretty good. I don't see any uh, spots quite yet that I could... I mean, I, I don't know if you see that little spot right there, but it's a little nick. I might fill that back in afterwards, but we'll see. I'm not too, uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, this can. Let me see. It's looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna do a quick look, and then we're gonna start getting rid of this paint and see what happens. Of course, you're gonna see the reflection of my ceiling once the paint's gone. That's gonna make it a little bit difficult to see, but uh, we'll see if we can't get a good focus on this. Uh, you know what? There is a little bit of a spot right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. There we go. Just gotta fill that spot in. I might actually make this a little bit smoother here too, but. You see me using two hands too, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, stability. You can you can be a lot more stable with two hands. Where my left one is guiding my right one, my right one's holding it, but my left one's guided. But my left one is also giving me pressure. So I'm I'm pushing down on my left to give me the amount of pressure that I want. Um, and because the bird jumps a lot because it's going at you know 3,500 RPM. It jumps a little bit and it'll try to run away from you depending on which direction you're going um, it helps make things a lot smoother and you can with the difference in pressure you can actually make it a little bit of a lighter a little bit of a deeper cut in your image and uh, that's important when you're doing um, you know shading and and thin lines and stuff like that that you just want to want the edges to fade a little bit on the inside they're not going to fade but you'll see I don't know if you can see it very well on here but you'll see that like along here I etched it so that it's darker on the inside and lighter on the outside and it, it gives it it gives it a little bit of a difference in view so when you're looking at it at different angles or walking by it it'll actually shimmer and make uh make almost a three-dimensional look to it and make it look rounded and that's kind of what I'm going for here so um, I always try to make things a little bit different you don't want to have it too uniform because art's never very uniform you want to make it look a little bit different that's what that's kind of what I'm going for and there's a couple of spots that I've missed that I didn't include you know I don't know if you can see up here but there's spots right there that are empty and that's okay because when you're looking at it, it kind of looks dirty you know it looks there's spots on it It'll look different, not so uniform, and we're talking about a fantasy image here. We're not talking about, you know, you know, somebody's wedding photo. So <laughs> it's it's important to have a little bit of variety in here. That's what I like. I like variety in art.
that's it. I think it's time. I think it's time to start getting rid of this black paint. Let's see what we got. Oops, my lights. Oh, all right, let's go. Let's get some of this paint off, see what we have. I don't know if you can see that well. You can't because the light, but oh man, it's frustrating. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Look at that. That's just the edging. A little bit of the number. You can see the difference between. Oh, guys, that looks amazing. I'm loving this. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. That looks so amazing. I am loving that. I'm excited to get rid of this paint and see what's under it. That looks so nice. Oh, stick with me. Let's get this all off. Wow. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit worried about doing this piece because I thought, well, you know, it's it's quite a bit more detailed than I kind of want to do. I'm not really, you know, the gears and the, and the numbers being straight and everything for the clock, you know, the roundedness of it. You know, it's not easy, you know, you gotta, you can tell when something's supposed to be round and it isn't round, it makes a big difference, but this is a fantasy image, like I said earlier, man, and this is, it's important to have a little bit of error, because that's, that's what makes it look so much better, a little bit of error, it's a fantasy image, let's get all this paint off, let's see what it looks like, let's go, this is awesome. But I am just using water, just regular water in a water bottle, nothing special. Using paper towel, nothing special there. And uh, because it's acrylic paint, it just comes off nice and easy. Um, but once all the paint's gone, all the big parts of the paint's gone, I'll, I'll use a little bit of uh, cleaner, probably just Nora Windex cleaner. And uh, just to get the rest of it off. But water works really good just soaks into the acrylic paint takes it all off nicely no big deal I see up here is all dry because I didn't there's no water in there so just keep using some water soak it up let it sit there I might just let it sit a little bit because it's on the edges and there is a little bit of stands 
underneath it and I really don't want to push too hard on the stands because I'm worried on the edges that I might break it so I'm gonna I'm gonna just let this sit there we go just let that sit in there looks good just let that sit a couple of minutes here and I'll be right back to to start doing that. I'm going to turn that light back on here. I'm going to put it down a little bit. A little bit of orange, but you can see it. I don't know if you can tell the difference here, but it doesn't look too good on the camera, but if you look at the difference between the black area Oh man, the lighting just really is not No bueno! The lighting sucks! Let's see if I can change that. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, you see the edge in the paint area. If you look up here, you can see the difference between. Yeah, it is looking spectacular. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Said that's why I cover it with paint because you see how hard it is with the reflections to be able to see anything. This is just just regular light of reflections, and it's so difficult to see when you're trying to do lines. So I always cover it with a little bit of paint, and like I said, it's so easy to take this paint off. It's acrylic paint, just regular black acrylic paint. Comes off so easy. So I'm going to pull this off here and then I'm going to add a little bit more water, let it sit for a few more minutes and then I'm going to grab some some cleaner. Oh yeah, it looks so good. I've been trying to work on my lighting in here because it's really difficult to get lighting on a mirror. It's gonna make much of a difference so yeah it just comes off nice and easy nothing to it doesn't scratch doesn't leave any residue after you get it all cleaned off it's just perfect there you go there we go yeah it looks so good it looks so good I'm going to try to turn this overhead light off, actually. That might be... There we go. That's a little bit better, eh? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Look at that. there's some paint all over my desk now but that's okay that's okay oh my gosh guys look at that look at that holy crap that looks so good that uh, looks so good. Wow. Wow. Alright, I'm going to clean the rest of these edges off here. And then uh, I'm going to grab some Windex. And I'm going to come back and do the rest of it. I'm just going to do the edges first and then clean off my table a little bit. But guys, oh my god, it looks so good. I'm so impressed. These burrs really make a big difference on, on glass. I'm so glad I picked up the this new diamond burr kit. Definitely makes a big difference. A good kit, guys, you know, can definitely make all the difference. You know, if you start, you know, gouging or ripping out your glass or your mirrors or whatever that you're you're engraving on either upgrade 
you know, buy a new, new burr, your burr might be uh, missing some diamonds and it's just skipping on you. Or, you know, spend a couple extra dollars and get something that's, you know, a little bit more expensive. I mean, it's going to last you a lot longer too. And uh, don't forget the oil. Always dip your burrs in oil every once in a while. Give it a chance to cool down a little bit. Um, the burrs also help, or the oil also help it runs smooth across your uh, your glass whatever you're engraving or etching on so I mean I could probably do it a little bit more often than I do but oh guys this looks so good okay I'm gonna go grab some some light cleaner and uh, I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna clean it all off and take a couple of photos of it and see what we got because man I am definitely impressed by this this is looking really good really really good okay give me two seconds guys I'll be right back so here we go a little bit of glass cleaner on this bad boy see if we can't uh, get her nice and shiny there we go because we like shiny mirrors right it's all about shiny mirrors all right, let's do this, man. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm, I wish you could. I wish I could really show how it looks. What's up, my friend? Thanks for uh, following. Uh, I just get rid of all the acrylic paint, just clean her up a little bit, and let me tell you, this turned out really awesome. So so much better than I could have hoped for. Oh yeah, man. I wish the lighting worked a lot better for, for capturing mirrors because you really can't, it just doesn't do it justice for the reflection that you can see in, in real life. There is a big difference in what it looks like in real life compared to on, on camera, but I'm gonna get rid of all these little tiny pieces of block everywhere. It also helps smooth down the etching a little bit or the engraving. Um, man, I'm, I'm gonna try to get this focused a little bit because you can see, especially around around this area here, the fur, it gives it a nice three-dimensional look to it, depending on which direction you you have it on you can see it all these lines double up so when you're when you're walking by you see when it's straight it's not it's flat when you turn it a little bit it gives you a three-dimensional look um, there you go you can see it a little bit better there in the forehead and up on the gears and everything makes it definitely gives it a little bit of a difference and so when you're walking by it um, you'll see it, it looks like it actually kind of moves with you while you're walking walking by it uh, and that's one of the reasons why I really like etching on mirrors because it gives you that extra three-dimensionalism that you really don't have to work for it just automatically gives it to you so yeah it's the only problem about about it and showing it on on camera is that it's difficult to capture nicely because of the light and the reflection you know it's it's not like not like a painting where there's nothing behind it um, you unfortunately see everything so but I'll tell you what I am super happy with the way this one turned out I am so happy there's uh, there's still some lines some fingerprints and stuff I'll try to remove as much as these buff them out as possible of course I'll probably never get rid of all of them but I'll try to get rid of some of them so I can you know you can literally do anything on a mirror which you know you can do animals pet portraits humans you know you're, you're basically just looking at sort of a vector image trying to make a vector image um, and then once you sketch it on it's basically you know tattooing it's tracing and shading and uh, once you get to know your burrs a little bit um, the rest of it comes pretty easy you know and 
A steady hand helps, but it's not necessary. If you know you have a little bit of a shaky hand, don't worry about it. You use your other hand to stabilize it. And uh, and like I said, I I, I like art that doesn't have you know perfect straight lines or you know perfect rounded circles and stuff like that because you know honestly when people think about realism in art um i i'm in the opinion that if if people wanted a hundred percent realistic image of a piece then you're probably better off spending 30 cents and printing it and you know at a printing service like walmart or or something and hang it on your wall you know what's the point of paying an artist a whole bunch of money when you could just literally print out a photo you know I mean I know there's a difference because you know it's it's painted or it's you know whatever and there's nothing against you know people who do um, uh, realism and do really good at it and because you know all the power to on that's fantastic work but it's just not me I, I like to have you know some roughness to it I like to have some you know differences to it I like to have things you know um, I always for me the imperfections are what makes my art perfect in my opinion and a lot of artists have a hard time dealing with that because they they look at it and uh, and think to themselves I'm like holy cow you know it's it looks so rough and you know most artists are very very hard on themselves that they uh, but I, I'm telling you, as one artist to another, once you get over the fact that you're never going to be 100% happy and satisfied with your work, you're going to enjoy doing your work a lot more. So enjoy it, guys. Take, you know, take your time. You know, do, so, do some art. Relax. That's what it's all about. Enjoy the process. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, is it Rely Fish, uh, Mr. Fish? Yeah, I will definitely look into doing a dragon for sure. That's, that's something that would for, definitely interest me. Um, do you, if uh, I'll look in to see if I can get get a nice uh, a long mirror for that because I think that would look really really good. Do you want interested in anything in the background? Do you want like a castle in the background? Do you think, or would you just prefer just a nice big old dragon in the middle of an image? I definitely could do something like that for sure. This one's, uh, I guess, maybe sort of. A little Harry Potterish. <laughs> I definitely enjoy the fantasy for sure. Fantasy is where where it's at for me. I like to do fantasy, and I like to do like um, you know, like Mayan and and ancient Egypt and stuff like that. Um, I like to do that kind of stuff because there's not too many people doing that kind of stuff right now. So I'm looking into doing some Egyptian stuff. I'm probably going to do some uh, Mayan and, and other ancient uh, relic on glasses. I like to work on glasses too, like, uh, you know, bar glasses, whiskey, champagne, wine, that kind of stuff I like to do. Um, and the fun thing with doing it in a, in a wine glass or champagne glass or a drink glass or something like that is that it, it you can see clear through it. So um, you, you think of you know a glass as a circle you can actually have like a nice 3d image on it so you can have something on the back and something on the front so then when you're holding it no matter where you're looking at it it's it's a 3d image so you have a background and a foreground and you don't see it very good until you actually fill the glass with something so you can have a lot of fun with something like that where you don't really see it until you fill the glass But yeah, I definitely, you know what, I definitely will uh, will look into doing a dragon next. I, I will definitely look into doing that. Um, I do have a couple of uh, concepts that I sketched out a little while ago um, of dragons. I just haven't had the uh, the piece to do it on yet. I, I usually do, I u I'll usually start with, with the mirror or the object first and then work on a sketch to fit, fit, fit that. I, I can spend, like, you know, years doing sketches. Um, but there's no point until you actually have, you know, measurements and dimensions of whatever you're going to be sketching on because, you know, things change. Yeah, I mean, you could blow it up and make it different and stuff like that. But I like to have something like this and be like, okay, what's going to look good on this oval piece, you know? And you'll notice that the, the, the clock here in the back isn't perfectly round, right? Because it's, it's sort of on an angle a little bit. Um, the owl's, um, the owl has a, a nice face-on look to it. Um, but I like I like the little bit of a tilt to it, right? You, you don't want to have 
two things static and flat everything static and flat because then it, it actually gives you a flat image in you don't want that you want some depth and dimension to it and that's why it's important to have a little bit of like you things that are skewed a little bit makes it look like it goes a little bit far like i said when you when you tilt it it gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional look just because the way a mirror is it sits on top of each other if you you see all the videos where people put their finger on it and you can see your finger on the other side you know it's the exact same with this when you have an etching or you have lines on the mirror um, you can see a double line of it and depending on what angle you're at the further that line gets so if you're on you know an angle of right about here looking at at this line right here those two lines are separated by probably you know a centimeter centimeter and a half so it gives it sort of a you know extra depth to it which i i really enjoy because we're, like i said when you walk by these um it moves with you it just kind of tilts with you it gives it that sort of a reflective look and that's why i really enjoy doing mirrors it's it's just so much more to it than just a flat static image and i like that i like it and this one turned out spectacular i like this one so much and i can't wait to do another one so yeah, I will listen, man. I will get on it and see if I can't do a uh, a dragon. Um, I'm gonna find a good mirror to do that on, and hopefully, hopefully I can figure out a way. See, it looks so nice. I apologize for the mess. You're probably looking over at all my art supplies there, all my shelves. But yeah, this turned out incredibly nice I'm gonna take some photos of this guys and uh, I'm gonna probably add my signature down here I would like to add a signature and uh, the date and then we'll be we'll be done so you know what actually let me let me do that now I'm gonna add my signature down here Turn that light on just a little bit. So I think I can add my signature right here. This looks good, eh? Don't forget to sign your work, guys. It's important. signature on let's go love it love it oops I just dumped that all on me love it love it love it love it love it love it a little bit of a scratch there but that's okay nothing I can do about that oh man it looks so good Looks so good. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, end this, take some photos of this bad boy, get her up posted, and, uh, yeah, catch me on uh, Instagram at uh, McCrinfineArt. Thanks for joining us, guys.